today on The Daily Dose. The Sand Creek Massacre. After the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1851 made lands north of the Arkansas River to the Nebraska border, the exclusive domain of the Cheyenne and Arapaho people, the treaty broke down when gold was discovered in the Colorado Territory in 1858. By 1859, more than 100,000 Euro-American fortune seekers, known as 59ers, had poured onto Native American lands, ushering in a precipitous rise in hostilities by 1861. In an effort to curb the violence, on February 8th of that same year, Cheyenne Chief Black Kettle and several Arapaho leaders accepted the terms of the federal government's Treaty of Fort Wise, granting them 600 square miles of protected land to include a substantially reduced reservation along the Arkansas River to its northern boundary at Sand Creek. In June of 1864, Governor John Evans of the Colorado Territory, along with Colonel John M. Shivington of the U.S. Army and Fort Leon Commanding Officer Major Ned Wincoop, encouraged Black Kettle and his people to move their village to Sand Creek. Instead, in a bit of open treachery against Native Americans, at sunrise on November 29th, some 675 U.S. volunteer soldiers under Shivington's command attacked Black Kettle's Sand Creek encampment of some 750 Cheyenne and Arapaho people, employing small arms and artillery fire that slaughtered many of the villagers, particularly non-combatant women, children, and the elderly. Many who survived the initial attack fled across a dry creek bed and up a small rise, where soldiers shot at them as they struggled over sandy terrain. Those who managed to crest the small hilltop frantically dug pits and trenches to protect themselves, which drew further artillery fire over the next eight hours, leading to the deaths of some 230 Cheyenne and Arapaho people. The following day, soldiers returned to the site of the massacre, committing further atrocities on the dead before departing on December 1st to resume their campaign. In 2000, copies of letters from Captain Silas Soule and Lieutenant Joseph Kramer were found in Denver, offering first-hand accounts of the massacre, which revealed that more than a hundred men of the attacking U.S. volunteer soldiers stood in moral resistance to their orders, making the Sand Creek Massacre one of the darkest days in Native American history. And there you have it, the Sand Creek Massacre, today on The Daily Dose. If you like learning something new every day, subscribe to The Daily Dose on YouTube or sign up for emails at dailydosenow.com.